good day to you, partner. I'm he, and I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Hey guys, Wheat Solo here, aka the Skeleton King. So as you can see, we're we're making another video with Bone Spear, and um, that's because for one, Bone Spear is one of the only legitimate changes we know about facing Necromancer for next season. That and Blood Golems, um, which I probably will end up testing in beta. Uh, but with Bone Spear, with the patch that Rinrid made, it's easy to actually look at what the changes will be made. And if you remember from my last video, I'm not actually that excited on playing Bone Spear uh, because I think Boner is boring, but they did make the Boner bigger. And although a small Boner isn't fun, a bigger Boner is funner. So is the Boner big enough for me to want to play with it? It might be, especially when I proc it innocently. <laughs> that was some really bad wordplay, and I hope you're all still here for the rest of it because Necrochat was freaking out today because people are so stoked. We even had a guy named Al Anus III suggesting using Bone Hue. So, I mean, why would you not want to say Boner? And you can't really say Boner too much unless you're playing a Bone Necromancer or else you just really are a creep and you should probably end up with P. Diddy or something. So, yeah. Anyways, Necrochat is fun, guys. Okay, so actually talking about the video. Uh, what we've got on screen, we have an Act 3 Static Shock Merc uh, with a pretty standard brand Innocence Necromancer. You'll see the gear at the end. The gear is legitimate, solid, um, not like plus skill, charm, crap like that. And it's actually real gear. Um, could it be a little better? Sure. Is this version a, a pretty close to optimal of this version, basically using 75 FCR? It's pretty good, so thank you, NoRec. Um, I do like 125 FCR, but it's hard to make 125 FCR work while using Drac Gloves, and I think using Drac Gloves is the right play, because I've played both. i played it without Drax, and i played it, um, obviously, with Drax, and I think having the life after each kill is better than missing out on that 125 breakpoint. Now, you can hit the 125 breakpoint if you run uh, Declone Boots really easily, and the amulet's actually pretty bad, but one of the problems with uh, Brand Innocent Necromancer is it's actually hard to get your resistances and FCR. Basically, you know, he's got CBF, Cham. Getting all the corruptions you need to try to get life after each kill too, it does get challenging, and I think this setup is completely fine. Um, so by the way, one quick note, I was going to skip the boss because it was taking a while, because uh, these archers suck. I've got 20 points in revives. Um, but then I remembered, it actually kills bosses really quickly if you just stomp the boss and stand on them. It's actually a legit way of killing a boss, and then I've got council members to help out. So do I think this is worth your time? Yes, I wasn't even going to test this build because I think this build is good. Now, it's... It's better. Just, just okay, a bigger hitbox on these items is good. How good is this map for it? Not that great. Cows are tanky. Um, they, in general, have good resistances. And then um, this map rolled 10% magic absorb. But why did I keep this video? Because I actually ran a second cow map with better mods. Well, this one had super high density. And I actually felt like the clear speed was almost the same between this super high density, poorly rolled map and the lower density, better rolled map. Basically, if you're running a proc build, I'm sure you know this by now, density isn't the issue. You want more density for more procs. And this build is gonna be like that. Now, is it completely safe to stomp? Um, basically, yes. For one, I do have bone armor if I wanna cast it. And I think casting is actually a waste of time because I have so much life after each kill. Now, if you are running a variant without as much life after each kill, then you should definitely cast Bone Armor more. But when you should cast it is especially if there's an aura stack. Now, if there's only one, you can get away with it. I'm not saying you won't ever die because sometimes just bad luck happens. Uh, but in general, as I played this build more, I stopped casting Bone Armor unless I saw an aura stack. And every once in a while, if there was just, you know, might and concentration can kill you. 
But on the screens where there's a ton of enemies, like right here, you can just see how effective this actually is at killing very tanky mobs in a T3 with Magic Absorb. Now, I do have the Static Shock Merc, which actually I want to touch on. It's possible that if the Act 1 Physical Merc is not nerfed, that Act 1 Physical Merc will be better. And there's a caveat, because I actually think Act 3 Static Shock is better if you're not trying to full clear. Because as you can see on this screen, Act 1 Physical Merc would not help you do much, okay? But as now at this point, yes, Act 1 Physical Merc would help. Now, I would rather play the build like this to play fast and fun and see all these mobs die thanks to Static Shock than try to clear more of a map. Um, but that is up for you to decide. I know a lot of players have issues not killing every mob, and if you have issues like you have to kill every mob, then don't play a prox build because because prox builds by their nature will just not operate well unless you play them like you see on the screen. And so that's just between you and your version of what you think life should be. Now, this is from the other map with lower density and my face is making a weird scary face right now because I thought that was pretty cool and exciting and a lot of cows died because they're not very tanky. Um, and it was like dense enough to actually be cool. And then like even this section is still pretty awesome. So it's not that expensive to be honest, to make it play a T3 like this, to get the right corruptions on the right pieces of gear, SCR rings, etc. it definitely would be pricier. You know, all of the large charms are perfect. Um, but considering that we're relying on rune words, the price will never be too extreme. The circlet would be the most expensive part. So, okay, keep that in mind. As the season goes on, necro circlets become very expensive. So as you can see, the skills are incredibly simple. The gear is pretty simple as well. That is a absolutely ludicrous circlet. Um, the arrows could be way better if they could have life after each kill. Um, they could have faster run walk, um, better res, etc. Mainly life after each kill, to be honest. And then other standard gear. And the only thing I think would really be improved upon is the Maras as kind of a placeholder, but at least it, it is a good Maras. The last thing to bring up is the Merc is definitely not optimal. It is running, I forgot to actually show the items. Marowaks for CBF is fine. Arachnid for SCR, fine. I believe a Mage Fist, fine. Exile, fine. I'm not sure why he didn't choose to put Ferocity for the Helm. I guess he wanted some Static Shock Pierce, um, so that's fine. But I just feel like if you're going to be running Innocence and Exile, you might as well throw on Ferocity. But I I'm not sure what actually would be better at the end of the day. It definitely would make the Aura Stock Stop. <laughs> the Aura Stack Stomps feel a bit better, but I'm not going to say it's right or wrong. Um, but the weapon, I don't need Meditation. Like at all so the best weapon war strike's not going to be usable um but i think probably a crescent moon would have been good um or even a plague and besides that skill you out guys come and play with us daddy